everyone, it's Annabelle and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, as you can see in front of us, we're going to be doing another media test. So by this, what I mean is we're going to be looking at lots of different types of media. We're going to be measuring their water absorbency capacity, how much they change the pH of the water that they've been soaking in, and then on how quickly they dry over a seven day period. If you haven't seen my last media test where I mainly tested different inorganic media, I definitely recommend going and checking that out first because that's gonna be a much more detailed investigation where I really explain my methodology and how I actually set the experiment up. In today's video, I've already kind of set part of it up and what we're looking at is the time point after a 24 hour soak in water. The only thing I'm changing very slightly is that I'm also going by volume as well as weight. And by this, what I mean is I've put a very similar volume into each cup. So the weights are all going to be different. Whereas before I tried to keep the weights all the same, but I feel like maybe after some feedback on the last video, this may be more relevant to growers. And obviously we're gonna have to measure the change in weight. So all the weights are gonna be different, but I can normalize all of that. So then at the end, we can also look at how much water is held per cup because in a given volume in an orchid pot, maybe that's more relevant. So if you haven't seen my last video, I go into a lot more detail in that and I give a full background on why I'm doing this. As a brief recap, I think it's very important that as orchid growers, growing a huge and varied amount of orchids in huge and varied different environments, I think it's important that we understand the media tools that we are using, how they operate in a set environment. Obviously, this is my environment, but that environment is remaining steady. So all of these are being tested under the same conditions. And then that gives us so much more options in how we can control how much moisture and aeration is in the pot in lots of different environments so that we can grow lots of different orchids in lots of different ways as individuals coming from varied backgrounds, varied climates. I think that's really important to understand. And by doing this, we can really uh, quantify this in a way that's much more accessible maybe to people who don't have access to all these different types of medias and are wondering how they can control moisture in a pot in a certain way because in a traditional organic setup you'd maybe mix bark and moss to add more moisture into the pot or more aeration into the pot maybe add some perlite in there um, so I've also chosen to include organic materials in today's video because I had access to some I was sent some very randomly by orchid garden I guess maybe they figured out who I am I don't know, it's a bit, it was a bit weird. I received a random parcel of like bark, ceramis, um, different sized barks and pumice and some pots as well. So I'd like to thank them for sending that. And in today's video, we're going to show some of their materials. I'm not sure why they sent it to me. They literally just, a parcel arrived one day and it was from them and I was extremely confused, but thank you. And it gives us the opportunity to test out bark in this equation because I didn't actually have any otherwise. So with that said, let's get on with the media test. So at this point, we're at a 24 hour time point. So these have all been soaking in water for 24 hours. Before I soaked them, I took a dry weight. So I'll show you one that I can show you on the cup easily. I wrote down the weight of the materials dry. For moss, this was very difficult to judge because I only had it in that compressed pack. So I just put a small amount of moss in the bottom of the cup, added water, and obviously I've added too much moss, but we have a dry weight to measure against, so we can still measure accurately. It's just obviously there's a bit more moss in the cup than, for example, bark. Um, but that's fine. I, we, as long as we understand that, that's fine to do. Then for like things that, that are larger, I found they were floating a lot, so I had to put little cups on the top to keep them under the water. Um, so we've got dry weights and we're now going to pour off the water that's in the cups and measure the pH of the water that they've been soaking in to see how much they affect the water because that is a measure of how um, the media that we're using can affect nutrient absorption at different pHs. So as a control, what I've got is just water that is from my tap and has been poured at the same time that I poured all this so it's been sat overnight because um, certain substances can evaporate from water when it's been left standing which can potentially affect your pH so I felt like it was fairer to leave that water overnight. Um, before we get into this I'm just going to briefly introduce you to each group of materials that I'm going to be testing today. So in front of us we have a bark, we have small bark, 
we have medium grade bark and we have large grade bark and this will show us how the media size affects how much moisture is retained within the pot um, which is obvious but at the same time it'll give us something as a benchmark to really quantify against and understand so I think that's very important I've, I've actually done the same for pumice so I did test a lot of materials last time so I'm not including most of them this time, although I have included pumice as a comparison because I'm doing lots of different sizes of it. And as a benchmark, even though I did test it last time, I'm going to be including lacquer because that's like a control between our two experiments, I guess. So small bark, medium grade bark and large bark is the first group of materials I'll be testing. The next group I'll be testing is pumice in various different brands and sizes. So recently, I mentioned in my last video, I placed an order with Kazen Bonsai, which I'm very excited about because they have some really good quality pumice that I can try out, as well as a few different inorganic materials that I've never tried before that I used in bonsai making. So I'm also gonna be testing some of those today. Um, so from Kazen Bonsai, we have their small grade pumice. And we have their large grade pumice. So I've just brought the light down so you can actually see that better. So small grade pumice and large grade pumice. We then have the pumice that I use as standard in all my inorganic media um, setups now after a bit of trial and error, which is the Lava Light pumice, which is the same sort of grade as the Kazen Bonsai medium pumice, but will give us a nice um, kind of way to look at different brands of pumice and how brand and quality may affect how you're using the material. And then we've got some extra, extra large pumice that Orchid Garden sent to me. Um, they sent this to me for free. I had had a few issues with my last order, so I wonder if it was to do with that. But the fact that they sent me Ceramis does make me think maybe they discovered my YouTube channel and put two and two together. Um, anyway, thank you very much to Orchid Garden for giving me the opportunity to uh, try out some of their materials. So this is absolutely huge pumice, and I guess really I would realistically maybe only use this for Vanders or something similar. But I thought that this would be a really interesting comparison. You can see how porous it is and how many holes it has in. So um, we'll see how much that has absorbed. But that gives us, a, again, a nice range of sizes of the same material in different brands to try out. So that is my pumice group. We're also going to be testing good old New Zealand sphagnum moss. And this is the Besgro sphagnum, which is some of the best quality sphagnum that I've found. This was the compressed brick. So I just tore off a tiny bit of the compressed brick, put it in the bottom and added a cup full of water overnight. And you can see it has swollen massively. So um, that is the sphagnum moss. Then, as mentioned as a control, we're going to be looking at Lekka uh, to keep a control between the two experiments. Then I've got this other quite strange inorganic material from Kazen Bonsai that they call ST, which is their version of Kyodama. Um, it's like an unbranded version. They can't actually call it that because I think of the region that Kyodama is produced in is what affects its naming. So um, they've called it ST, which is their brand of Kyodama, I believe, which is something that's used in Bonsai. And I thought it'd be very interesting to try out based on appearances after a a few little tests with some orchids. It doesn't actually seem to hold much moisture, which is very surprising to me because it's supposed to be a porous mineral substrate. So I am very surprised by that, but we're going to test out that. Next, we're going to test this stuff, which is extremely strange. It's called super light black. Um, and to me, it looked like very, very tiny lecker, but in a different color. Um, but again, after a couple of tests, it doesn't seem to wick that well. So I'll be very interested to see how much water this has actually absorbed. So this is again, a product um, marketed and branded by Kazen Bonsai. Um, just as a disclaimer, they, neither they nor Orchid Garden have paid me anything. Um, and I purchased all of the Kazen Bonsai stuff with my own money, the Orchid Garden stuff. I'm still really confused about it. I don't know why it turned up, but we're going to use it. Might as well take full advantage of the stuff I was sent. We're back to this experiment and it's actually been about a month since I started this. And this is because I messed up 
Um, I didn't wash some of my pumices and things and like the super light black which is quite dusty. I didn't wash them before I started this thinking oh it'll be okay and then I noticed that my wet weight went down compared to my dry weight because I basically washed them and I'd washed all the dust that they were coated with off which was quite a lot for the pumice. So um, I'm back it's taken me a while to get around to coming back to this, I'm sorry. Um, I should have published this a long time ago, but I've been like moving house and stuff and it just got put to one side. I've added in an extra media from what we just talked about, which is lava rock. I've dried that out, washed it and then dried it. It's in a slightly damp cup just because I uh, just did a previous experiment with Ceramis and I had a cup going spare. So uh, it's dry and I'm just gonna take some weights for these guys, uh, dry weights, and then we're gonna incubate them with water for 24 hours and see how much water they take on and then look at the drying period over a period of like a week. So I'm just gonna take dry weights for each of the media that we're using. So first of all, just going to zero to an empty cup. And then we're going to take some weights. So 160 grams of lava light pumice, 93 grams of Kazan large pumice, 208 grams, 209 grams of ST, 76 grams of super light black, 112 grams of small pumice from Kazan bonsai, 250 grams of lava rock, 71 grams of large bark. You can see the difference in washing. It was 83 before I washed it, and now washed and dried at 71 grams. So there's a lot of dust on that. 121 grams of lecker. And I split the sphagnum moss properly this time since I'd prepared it. 5 grams of sphagnum, 95 grams of large grade pumice, and 49 grams of small bark, and 49 grams of medium grade bark. So I'm now going to pour some water and I'm going to put the same amount of water into each cup. Luckily we have lines on these cups so I can pop it up to that line and soak them for 24 hours and then come back and measure pH and their wet weight after soaking and see how much water each media is holding on to per um, amount in each cup. So after 24 hours soaking in water, um, we're back. I did put a cup on top of the some of the media that floated more, like the large bark, this bark, and the large pumice, to try and get it to kind of um, sit below the water level. So I'm now just gonna take some pH measurements as a baseline, so we know kind of what pH we're talking about with the different media. And to do this, I'm going to pour off the solution from each of the cups that's been soaking with each of the medias into the jug and take a pH reading. So our first pH reading is going to be just the water. And this has been sat at room temperature overnight. So for just the water that's been sat at room temperature overnight, uh, for 24 hours we're looking at pH of 8.65 so that is our baseline pH. So just as a comparison point my fresh tap water is reading at a pH of 8.11 so leaving it to stand for 24 hours raised the pH by approximately 0 0.55 ish, 54 ish. So just leaving your tap water or nutrient solution standing for 24 hours will adjust the <laughs> pH of it. This could be due to evaporation or it could be due to a um, reaction with the minerals that are in tap water where things are dissociating in solution. Um, it could be temperature, it could be all sorts of things. So just bear that in mind. I've pH of my tap water is reading 8.10 fresh out the tap and 8.65 after standing for 24 hours. Then we want to take pH readings from each of the medias. So I'm just taking a pH of the bark water. And that's gone down quite dramatically. Bark has caused the water to become quite acidic. And this is fresh bark, um, just the one available from Orchid Garden. So it's not an Orchiata bark, but it is a good quality bark. And 
and this was the uh, medium grade bark, not the smallest. So the pH of the water that was soaking with the medium grade bark for 24 hours is now gone down to 6.31 ish and that's down from 8.65 so that's gone down quite significantly so I'm just going to get rid of that water and do the next bark so we'll take an average for the three different barks they're all the same type of bark but different grades so that this is just kind of replicates so I'll just take the reading for the large bark next we've done the medium bark so I've just rinsed off the pH probe and the jug before I put the water in for the large bark So the water that was soaking with the large bark is at 6.27. So what we'll do for bark is because I've got three replicates, we'll average this. I'm expecting them all to be fairly close. So pH has gone down from 8.65 to 6.27 after a 24 hour soak in large bark. Let's get rid of that and rinse out the jug. And now we're going to check for the fine grade barks. So this is the fine grade barks. So we're going to check the pH for that. Just going to use a sieve. So bear in mind that all of these materials were rinsed extremely thoroughly because at the beginning of the month I rinsed them then um, tried for the first time and realised I hadn't rinsed them well enough and the weights were changing between rinses so these have had lots of soaks and rinses all of this media so this pH change isn't an artefact of dust or anything. Uh, the fine bark is going down a lot actually so maybe it's not correct to average them maybe we'll have to uh, do them separately because that is way more than I was expecting actually. I guess the fine media, there'll be like a larger surface area, I guess, per, so it might release the hydrogen ions that it's carrying, that alter the pH more maybe. It's going down quite a lot for the fine bark and this is brand new, fresh, good quality pine bark. I think it's pine bark. I will double check that. I'll put up on screen what type of bark this is and I'll maybe just put a picture of the listing from Orchid Garden since they did send me these. Okay, so bear in mind my starting pH was 8.65. Soaking for 24 hours has brought the pH down to 5.88 for this. So if I were growing in organic media, I probably wouldn't be pH adjusting my nutrient mix until I checked this because say I pH it down to six because I think that that's a great optimal range for different nutrients and then I put that with this bark it's going to take the pH down quite a lot I think um, depending on the, the baseline natural acidity of each medium. So I would just double check that if you're pHing things because organic media does usually have a naturally acidic pH, like we're showing here. So the fine bark was settling on a pH of 5.89 for the water after a 24 hour soak with a fine bark. So I think that we will treat these all separately, not as replicates because that is different. So while we're doing organic, we might as well do them all in a row together. Next, I'm going to do the moss and this has absorbed a lot of water. So what I'm going to do is actually properly squeeze out this moss to get as much of the water out as possible. Don't want to squeeze it too much because we're then going to take a moisture reading so I'll put this back in but just to get an accurate pH reading. So 24 hours soaking with sphagnum moss let's see what the pH goes down to and this is the Besgro sphagnum moss so it's a really good quality sphagnum. So the pH of the water after a 24 hour soak with sphagnum moss is gone down from 8.65 to 5.72 so slightly more acidic than the fine bark and obviously the more moisture a media holds on to the faster it will break down so sphagnum moss can very quickly as it starts to decompose become very acidic so we're going to go for a ph of 5.66 for the sphagnum moss after 24 hour soak it's gone down a bit more while i've been talking but it seems to have stabilized at that now 
just going to pour that water back in because I'm going to be taking a weight measurement and I did squeeze that out so just to make sure it reabsorbs it. I think soak tests are better than pour through tests for this kind of application uh, for measuring pH. So now we're going to measure some of the inorganic materials. We've done all the organic ones. I'm going to start off with this super light black. So 24 hours of soaking with that media has brought the pH down from 8.65 to 8.17. Next we are going to do the ST bonsai supply media which is supposed to be the same as Kyodama I think. So that has brought the pH down to 8.13. Next we're going to do the large pumice. So the pH of that is reading at 8.42. So it's interesting to note that after the 24 hour soak uh, or the water standing at 24 hours, none of these have actually raised the pH of the water. Um, so it seems like their intrinsic pH hovers below the value of my tap water after it's been stood for 24 hours because they're all kind of bringing it down. Um, so that's something worth noting. And I think it's probably worth soaking your doing a water soak for 24 hours and also maybe a nutrient soak to check what they're leaving your nutrients at after 24 hours or your RO or whatever water you're using for your orchids. So the small grade pumice is measuring at 8.33 pH. And I'm just going to do the large case and bonsai pumice. And that is measuring around 8.32. That small grade bumice was also from Case and Bonsai, so it would have been the same, um, probably same type of pumice, same manufacturer, same processing that's been that it's been subjected to. Um, whereas the other pumices I'm using are from different brands, they could have been processed slightly differently or just be different quality found in different locations. So 8.32, we're going for with that medium to large grade pumice from Case and Bonsai. Next, I'm going to measure the pumice that I actually use as standard and that I've been, I, I tried a few different brands of pumice and this was the one I settled on that I liked the most. This is a lava light pumice that I've been mixing in with my lacquer for mixes. So we're gonna go for a pH of 8.45 on that one. Next we are going to measure lava rock. So lava rock is giving a pH reading of the water after 24 hours sitting with it at 8.41. And next we are going to measure the LECA. So the LECA is reading at a pH of 8.30 after a 24 hour soak. So I'm now going to pop all these results onto some graphs so that we can observe the overall changes in pH. So I've graphed this um, using the full pH scale, but we will take a more zoomed in look in a second. I've grouped these into organic media and inorganic media because you can see the most dramatic changes between the two groups. And this is due to the fact that organic media has an intrinsically acidic pH, whereas inorganic media tends to be neutral to alkaline in pH. And the actual variation in inorganic media is not that great. The optimal range for absorption of all nutrients across the board is between 5.8 and 6.5 um, although some nutrients are absorbed slightly higher than that so it's worth alternating pHs of feed but you can see the value of checking your pH looking at these different medias and the different intrinsic pHs they have and how that affects these soaks you can see that inorganic media is very similar across the board but above the optimal range, which is why I think with inorganic media, it is critically important that you check pH. 
For organic media, I would suggest that you check the pH of what you're using because as organic media breaks down, bear in mind that this is all fresh, it will acidify even more and take you down into a lower pH range, which can be both detrimental for roots and for nutrient absorption. So for organic media, most of the media tested here for bark and moss falls within a good pH range for nutrient absorption straight out of the pack. But as this begins to decompose and degrade, it will fall below the optimal. Whereas inorganic media will always stay steady, but be above the optimal, which is why I I'm very careful with pHing down my nutrient feeds and controlling the pH and alternating pH a little bit to get optimal absorption of nutrients across the board. So now what I'm going to do is fully drain all of these to make sure that they are, um, for the sphagnum I'll just pour off what I have in this cup. Um, and then weigh the cups to see how much water the media is holding on to for each cup compared to the dry weight. So I fully drained off all of the media. For the sphagnum, I didn't squeeze it at all after I poured that first lot back in. I just literally poured it um, and left it be. So I'm just gonna use an empty cup of the same type of cup as a zero measurement and then take weights for all of these and see how much they've changed with the soak. Okay, from Lekka, we're at 155 grams, where previously we were 121 grams. The lava light pumice is now at 195 grams from 160 grams. We're at 92 grams for the large grade bark, which is from 49 grams. Lava rock, we're now at 290 grams from 250 grams. Large bark, we're at 98 grams from 71 grams. And the bark that I measured before was medium bark, not large bark, that went to 92 grams from 49 grams. Sphagnum, we've gone from 5 grams dry to 111 grams wet. Uh, Kays and Bonsai large pumice at 147 grams from 93 grams. Orchid Garden extra large pumice, we're at 133 grams, where previously we were at 95 grams. The fine grade bark from Orchid Garden were at 96 grams from 49 grams dry. The Kazen Bonsai ST Kyodama is now at 255 grams, which was 209 grams dry. Kazen Bonsai Super Light black which is looks like baby lacquer but it has seems to have quite different properties 118 grams from 76 grams and then the fine grade pumice from Kays and Bonsai 175 grams from 112 grams so we've taken all of our measurements and I'll pop them up in a graph on screen. So I've graphed these results according to the difference in weight from the starting dry weight to after the soak and how much water has been retained per cup. So you can see that the points to consider in choosing media can include the size of media as well as the quality of media and that's the main take home that I would say from this. Overall sphagnum moss held the most water out of all of these medias, probably no surprise there. The smaller grade barks held more water than the larger grade barks and the same applied for pumice. If we take a closer look at the bark, the fine grade bark held almost double the amount of water in the same volume in the cup that the large grade bark does. This tells us quite a lot in terms of which we would choose for different orchids in different environments. However, taking a look at the pumice, the two of the same brand were the Kazen Bonsai, and you can see that the same rule applies. The fine pumice held a lot more moisture than the medium pumice. 
Taking a look at a couple of different brands, as well as different sizes, the Lava Light Pumice held a lot less water than the similar size Case and Bonsai Pumice, showing that quality really does matter, as well as size. Lekka held the least water, but also something to consider might actually be the wicking efficiency, as well as the gaps and the contact between the media, because I've noticed that the Lava Rock, as I've been trying out, seemed to not hold much water, and I think that, that might actually be due to wicking efficiency. So I'll expand on this further with a wicking test, I think, because I think that is also a huge um, factor when we're using inorganic wicking setups like semi-hydroponics or self-watering. And that's something that I always struggle with um, with the dry top layer. So I'm going to look into those factors more but there are many many points to consider with choosing media. You can see that there's a vast difference between the actual ability of each media to hold on to water. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to dry them for seven days which is kind of replicating a wet dry period in a cup. You really want it to be approaching dryness with organic media within seven days um, but also it'll help contribute towards how much of a dry top line there is with uh, semi-hydro inorganic media. And we will come back and see how much they've dried out in the seven day period at a constant temperature. I've decided to split this video into two parts because we're already at quite a lengthy time for this video. So in a second part, I will look at the drying times and also the wicking efficiency of each of these medias in the hopes of expanding on this further and giving us even more information in choosing medias and how we can play around with medias to create the perfect or semi-perfect environment in our climates in the pot for different orchids. Thanks so much for watching this video today and stay tuned for part two. If you did enjoy this video and want to see more like it, then don't forget to give it a like or subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on more regular orchid and media updates. I'll see you guys all later. Bye!